Good morning. Can everyone hear me? No, no. Yes. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, as part of a little experiment, as we're going to do some live demos, um, I'm going to record this on my phone as well. Uh, and I'm going to ask a very simple question. Uh, and I'm going to pick you at random. But this will make sense. So let's see. What's your favorite word? Equivalence, good word. Uh, let's see, down the back, the green jumper. What's your favorite word? Crestfallen. Crestfallen. Wow, we really did. This is—is is everyone here a feature writer? This is. The <laughs> <laughs> We're getting some good words. Uh, we'll take one more. Uh, I'm going to pick on people in the back because they don't like that. Uh, down the very back. No, no, to the right, trying to avoid it, yes. What's your favorite word? <laughs> Tranquility. That's a beautiful word. Okay, this is great. We will come back to the favorite words, and this will make sense, I promise you. Um, so, my name is Vincent Ryan. Um, I am from the Google News Initiative, and today we're going to talk about digital reporting. I was told not to move, and I have already started moving around. Um, this is a problem. Ah, so today we're going to talk about digital reporting and some tools and tips that can help you in your life as a reporter to find and tell new stories. Today we're actually going to mainly focus on finding. Uh, so I work for the GNI. So this is the goals of a session. My name is Vincent Ryan, um, and I've just gone through that. If you want more guides on how to use all of our tools, take a look at g.co forward slash news training. It's our training website. It has been updated. It will be updated again quite soon, and it will get even more beautiful and more useful, hopefully. And uh, when we launch new tools that are good for journalists, we tend to put how to use them on this site. It's available in 14 languages. That makes localization very interesting. Um, so if you do see any issues or errors on it, let me know. I will fix the language. <laughs> so. Is everyone familiar with the GNI? Yeah. Hands up, who has heard of the Google News Initiative? Excellent. Hands up, who has heard of News Lab? Okay, I'm going to pick on people again. Saja, what do News Lab do? That is. You were the first person to ever get this right. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I work for Google News Lab, and what we do is we provide a lot of training for journalists on how to find, verify, and tell news stories um, using a lot of Google's tools. And the News Lab is the editorial-focused part of the GNI. So the Google News Initiative, our goal is to do these three pillars. So improve quality journalism, support publisher business models, and create a global news ecosystem. So the middle pillar, which is uh, the business models, that is done by our colleagues in what's called the DGP, which is the Digital Growth Program. If any of you are interested in doing work around looking at your business models, improving your site's performance, how can you set up Subscribe with Google and all of these lovely tools, uh, let us know and we can probably enroll you in a program and uh, get you in touch with the right people. Uh, it's a very good program. It takes about six weeks. We can also get your site audited and make sure that it works really, really, really well. Um, the final bit is creating a global news community. That's events like this. Um, and we are very interested in supporting this ecosystem, bringing people together to collaborate and make sure that uh, there is lots of learning and learning from each other so that we can be better in the digital space. So this is what we're going to look at today. We're going to have a look at advanced search, then we'll have a look at the trends and alerts, and then we'll go into some research, which is where the fun will happen. So advanced search. Uh, hands up in this room, who is familiar with search operators? Uh, eh, that's not bad. Um, <laughs> it could be better. Um, search operators are the little words that you can add to any search, which help you find what you're looking for even quicker. Um, which is really useful when you're a journalist, particularly if you're trying to find a file type or something quite quickly. So these are some advanced search operators. If you were to search that exact search, Jaguar minus car, what would you find? Cats, big, big cats. Uh, pop quiz, what color is a Jaguar? Very 
very good. Yes, people tend to think they're black. Black jaguars have a melatonin imbalance, but generally a jaguar is spotty. Um, so if you put a minus sign, it will remove any mentions of that word. So jaguar minus car, that will just give you cats. Jaguar minus cat, that will give you cars. Um, this is very simple, and we're going to get to the more complex ones, so bear with me. Um, put a minus front, and that will leave the word out. Uh, EU plus fishing minus climate. So if you put a plus, it will only return results with that word in it. So this will just get you results from the EU around fishing, not including the word climate. Very quickly, and we'll keep going. Uh, obviously, uh, very, very important. It's coming up very soon. Uh, any Eurovision fans in the room? Yes. Okay, very good. I, you're Eurovision fan? No. Exactly. <laughs> um, so if you use the site operator, it will only return results from that site. So site, semicolon, and then Eurovision.tv will just return results from the Eurovision site. So figures and winners, that will return the official figures and winners from the Eurovision site. And that's the domain. It also works where it's really, really handy is at domain level. So if you do like site.co.uk or site.it, site.es, it will only return results from that domain level, which is a really good way of searching within countries. Um, this is another example. So this, I'll show this one live because it's kind of fun. Um, so file type um, will return only that type of file. So if we have a quick look at uh, this is the lengthy. Um, academic research into Taylor Swift, uh, which goes on for a staggering 10 pages of results. Um, so if you do PDF, it will only return PDFs. And that is what that does. You can do any file type, be it XLS, CSV. That will get you some nice data files. It can be fun. It's a good way to get into formatting data. Uh, and these are quite quick for company reports. Any business reporters? Have you spent hours looking around a website for the annual reports? If you combine site with file type and PDF and the word annual report, it will return all of them in about five seconds. Uh, yes? No, no. It will work in any language that, it that Google works in. It's across all of them. Oh, even though the, yeah, it should work in all of them. The, the keyword like file type, that should be in English, not, I don't know the Italian for file type, if anyone wants to tell me. Tipo di file. No, I, I, haven't, I haven't tried tipo di file. That's now my favorite word, though. <laughs> um, I, it should work. Uh, this is very quick. So this is another in URL. So that means that the word is in the, the, the top line. If you put this search in, journalism grants in URL apply, that will take you directly to the application page of any grant that is open. Um, it's a very quick way to get a, a kind of quick, what is open and what can I apply for? And then where this gets really interesting is, oh, in title, is anyone's in title? Uh, that will search through TikTok for uh, users who have the word climate in their title. Um, in title can be handy. Uh, lists, so this will do Twitter, so site, uh, and use that URL. The little asterisk means it expands to multiple versions, and then lists, and that will give you all lists that are covering Eurovision, um, where it becomes properly fun. Oh, sorry, we shouldn't forget this one, cache. Um, I'm unfamiliar with cache. So cache is, it is not the whole cache. It will only give you the last saved version. Um, anyone familiar with archive.org? Yes, I love archive.org. Uh, it is amazing, the Wayback Machine. Anyone who believes that you can take something down off the internet should really have a look at archive.org. Uh, it includes deleted YouTube videos. It's a lot of fun. Um, you can go back, once you have the URL, you can find anything that has been put on the internet. Uh, and it's a great way for tracking changes on website. Um, my favorite one is to go to the, uh, the BBC and you can see the very first website the BBC put up, which looked like teletext. Um, which my dad loves. <laughs> um, so cache is very handy for looking at old versions of things, um, but in, the Internet Archive is, is probably better. So this is where this gets really fun, is you can compound these. You can use them together where it becomes a ridiculously powerful investigative tool. Um, you can basically make them as complex as you like, and it will only return that information. Uh, we'll give you just a quick example of one of these. 
Uh, so let's see this one. So this is site linked in, in URL, or in URL pub, which means there's a published URL, then uh, removing the word directory in the URL directory, because that removes the LinkedIn directory. And then it adds, the end bit is uh, title, so jobs, and then what the title is. And so this is Archwell. So this is uh, Prince Harry's Foundation. So these are all of the people who, on their LinkedIn account, say they work for Prince Harry's Foundation. Um, you can do this for any company. You could just change that last word to say, instead of having Archwell, you could have, like, let's see, SpaceX. And that will just give you a load of people who work for SpaceX. Um, it's a really nice way to search through LinkedIn. It's a, basically a directory of people you want to contact if you're a journalist. <laughs> and this is a very quick way to scrape through it and find a huge amount of people. The well-known investigative outlet, uh, Hello Magazine, uh, used this, and they were able to come up with basically the entire staff of Harry and Meghan, um, which is, you know, a massive investigation. Um, that's the kind of thing you can simply do using these. And they're really, really powerful. They don't take any time or effort. It's just desk research. Um, where this becomes also a lot of fun is, so this is explaining it. So within this website, in LinkedIn, in title, this is looking for UX directories, um, design in URL or in URL publish, leave these sections out so you want to remove the directory. Um, and then results must contain one of these. And then you can add your company at the end. Uh, is everyone, I'm gonna, I always ask this question. Um, so the great thing about these compounding results is you can use them in another tool, it's called Google Alerts. Hands up in this room, who has Google Alerts set up? This always blows my mind. If you work in any publication, no matter what, you stud, so what area you cover, you should have alerts set up. Every time you come across a person, a company, or anything like that that's interesting to you, just set up an alert. It will run forever in the background, and it will return that person's name, any results including them. It used to be a bit blunt, where <laughs> it would basically kill your inbox. Um, anytime someone was mentioned on the internet, you got an email. Um, and that was terrifying, because you're, suddenly your email account would be like, oh, I've got seven million emails. Um, they've applied some, some AI to it. You can now set it when you want to receive that email. Um, so you will get a full list and broke it down and be like, there has been X number of mentions of this person. These are the sites where you are. I used to work in the business desk at the Sunday Times. I had, I think I had pretty much the limit of the amount of Google Alerts you're allowed to set up. I had them all set to be delivered to my inbox at 10 a.m. on a Tuesday morning. Why 10 a.m. on a Tuesday morning? Because my editorial meeting was 11 a.m. on Tuesday morning. And I would go into that editorial meeting and I would open my laptop and I would read search alerts to my editor who would say no <laughs> until he came to something. And he'd be like, that, that, that could be interesting. Um, the thing that it does incredibly well is it parses US court filings. No one can cover that. So if there was a person or a company that you're interested in that, I don't know, someone in Delaware decided to sue for something, you'd get that result and it would pop up, and then you would just have a click through to the courts page where you could download the documents and be like, oh, look at me, I'm an investigative journalist in Delaware. Um, whether I wasn't, I was sat in Dublin. Um, it's incredibly powerful. You should just take the time to set them up. They will run forever in the background. They require no maintenance. It's the only tool that will deliver stories to your inbox, and I can't recommend it enough. Um, I'm always shocked that not everyone puts their hand up. Uh, it works really well. Um, you can do it with the site modifiers. Uh, my favourite example of this ever is there is a town in England called Leek. Um, Leek is also a vegetable and a very popular soup. Um, so she had a search alert for Leek minus vegetable minus soup, um, which I just think is amazing. So it would only get results for the town. Um, you just have to refine them and make sure it gives you what you want. And then how often? You can set exactly what you want. Sources, you can kind of automate them. Um, region, it's all there in the alerts uh, framework. You should really take the time to do this. It's really good. Uh, 
We're going to have a quick video while I play with something else. This will also make sense. Even though it's a risk and I don't know what's on the other side, I'm going to make a bet on myself. I guess I'm kind of looking at this as a sort of rebirth opportunity. I just quit my job and flew to Scotland with no money or plans or friends. This is day one of me exercising every day. I've really gone and done it now. It's a bonus farm. Turned in my two-week notice. I just took the leap. Yeah, I'm really liking how my hair has been going. I feel like we're on the verge of a renaissance. They say to do what you love, and I love to dance. Oh, my God! I'm proud of you! I can't imagine a more beautiful thing. Have you any fun yet? Carnival is back. Rio is back. This is dedicated to the disabled community. This is our moment. I wanted other women and other people of color to know it is possible. I wanted to see was me in the media. She's black. Change has become a constant. The way we embrace it defines our future. I've never seen this kind of courage. They're fighting with all they have. The word freedom right now means a lot for us. This could be the beginning of a new era. You know, I, I call it evolution. This is what believing looks like. And don't you ever, ever give up on you. So that is the year in search. Um, that is built using um, one of our internal tools, which is called, well, not internal, sorry, public tools. There's no point in telling you about internal tools, um, which is called Google Trends. Is anyone familiar with Google Trends? Has anyone used Google Trends? What, what do you use Google Trends for? Uh, I look for queries in combination with fake news and uh, jokes and other tactics to see what people are searching for uh, that they think is fake news. So we, we are practicing websites, so we generate fact checks. This is a great use case of, of trends, yes. Uh, if, if sometimes you can just see a trend take off, um, particularly fact checkers can use it to be like, oh, we should intervene. Um, and it's a, it's a very good, really nice way to use it. Um, it's just gotten a new front end, so it now looks all pretty and nice. Uh, if you were in the data journalism uh, awards yesterday, you would have seen Simon Rogers. Um, Simon is essentially who's behind trends. He does all the work, um, and he's very good. Uh, it's really, really powerful. It basically allows you to look at what people are looking for all over the world. You can narrow down to a given country. You can look in different languages. You can look for YouTube. You can look for lots of different other things. The really, really, really important thing to remember with Google Trends is that it is indexed. So that means no matter what you search for, there is also going, always going to be a 100. So something will always be at the top of the line. Everything else is indexed to that highest point of interest. It does not mean 100% of people in the world are searching for that. <laughs> um, trends is based on a sample. It's a very large sample size, but because of the number of people who use search everywhere in the world, it is impossible to capture every single search. So it's a randomized sample, and then we use that to inform how the tool works. Can anyone guess what happened here? So we have AFC Ajax and AFC Feyenoord, who are two Dutch football teams. What do you think happened on the 18th of May at 4 p.m.? What do football teams... Play each they played each other, very good. <laughs> football teams play against each other, and when they do, you can get a spike in interest, and that, this is people searching for it. And then if you go and look at the geo, you can see exactly where in Holland Different people were searching for different teams. Um, so it's a good way to see like, what people are interested in. Uh, if we have a quick look at this as an example from yesterday. Or no, yesterday, the day before. Uh, I loved this phrase. Rapid unscheduled disassembly. Does anyone know what they were referring to? 
It, it is a rocket exploding, yes. And as you can see, this phrase was never particularly popular until the rocket exploded. Um, so <laughs> at that moment, everyone started to Google, uh, what does rapid un unscheduled disassembly mean? And you can see where in the world people were searching for it. And then you have the related topics, so Starship, um, which is just a fantastic topic. Um, and then you have rockets, you have explosion, Elon Musk, and fast, which is unexpected. And then these are the related queries, so what are the other things people were searching for? So SpaceX. Uh, does anyone want to give me a phrase? Anything to search? Anything to look for in trends? Any ideas? No? Blue, sorry, Sudan's a bit interesting, but blue ticks, hilarious. Um, <laughs> so if we go, well, the thing, I wonder will this work? Uh, mm, no, okay. So what's interesting about this is blue ticket isn't gonna do, really do a very good idea because it's a verification. Okay, verification should work. So as you can see here, it says search term. If you search for search term, where it just says underneath it, you can't really see, oh, you can't there, search term. When you search for search term, it will search for that exact term. It's actually better to use this one, topic. So topic means it will search for misspellings of that word or person, common misspellings. It will also search for synonyms. So it gives you a more of an overview of that topic. So if we go verification, this is the past seven days worldwide. It's pretty spiky. Um, let's see, we can stretch it out a bit. Say over 30 days, still pretty spiky. Uh, it's kind of just going along at being relatively popular. Um, so the, what's kind of, we'll go back to, the, I'm gonna go back to my unscheduled disassembly. Um, one of the ways, so if you're looking at a search, you're like, well, really how popular is that? You have to think like, what do people search for all the time? And people are really not that exciting. So the thing they search for all the time is weather. Um, and if you go weather topic, you'll be able to see by comparison to people searching for weather, because this will compare the two terms, weather basically follows the morning people search for what is the weather today, uh, and then it goes down over the course of the day. But by comparison, rapid unscheduled disassembly doesn't even register. Um, so it's comparing the indexing of the 100 for weather is so, so high that rapid unscheduled disassembly doesn't even measure in. So it's a good way to check of like, how popular is this really? Uh, the other one is, I think recipes is another one that's quite good for, for fact checking, or not fact checking, but for sense checking if something is truly very popular. Uh, and that's, that's kind of a quick run through of trends. You can also download the data. Um, oh, we'll have a look at real time. Sorry, I've forgotten that, it's our new version. Uh, so, we now have um, this trending now tab, which is over here, and you can go daily search trends, so that'll be over the course of the last 24 hours, and then you have real time. Uh, so the London Marathon appears to be on, um, and something seems to have happened to Eilish McLaughlin, which is unfortunate. Um, but as you can see, the London Marathon is, in the past 24 hours, has a big spike up of interest, and what else is going on? Record store day, that's always fun. Um, and Amal Rahan seems to have been selected for University Challenge, which is obviously TV's best program. Um, you can also change the country, so we can see like what's going on in Italy, is here. And now obviously this is in English, that's not great. Um, so if you go into the top here, you can see H-L-E-N, and if we change that E-N to I-T, it will then give me the results in Italian, and you can see in real time what is trending in Italian. Now, my laptop is set to English, which is why it defaults to EN. If the language on your laptop is set to something else, it will default to that language, and um, that's how it works. Um, but this is a great way of seeing what is trending in the last 24 hours in the real time, and you can basically look anywhere in the world. Uh, so that's kind of trends, quick overview. Um, we're gonna go into the kind of higher end tools. Um, these are, oh, we've gone through that, um, pinpoint. 
Has anyone in the room heard of Pinpoint? Ooh, we've got four, that's good. Um, Pinpoint is incredible. Pinpoint is the only tool that Google built specifically for journalist needs. Uh, it lives in a journalist studio, which is our suite of tools that we designed for journalists. You go to journalist studio, you can click anywhere. It has all of the maps, it has some of our visualization tools, um, and a lot of our security tools as well that you can look at and take advantage of. And um, so what Pinpoint does is, if you have a massive data dump of documents, you can upload them to Pinpoint. Pinpoint will then use Google's knowledge of the world, which is called a knowledge graph. So the knowledge graph is all of the entities that Google understands or something. These are usually person, places, and things. And it will basically create an index of all of your documents based on that knowledge. You can then search through that index and you can filter it so really, really quickly. And it, not only will it do uh, specifically what you're looking for, it will also understand synonyms. So for instance, if you put up a huge dump of documents and you put in the world alcohol, it will also get you beer, it will get you liquor, it will get you vodka. It understands that these things are the same. It's actually powered by AI. <laughs> and we've had it for years. <laughs> um, these are the document types that it works with. It will work with PDFs, it will work with images. So if you upload an image of handwriting, this will OCR the handwriting and make it searchable. Um, it works very, very well at that. Uh, and it does a very good job of transcription. Now, if things have gone exactly to plan, which is highly unlikely, we should be able to go in here and open this. And we should have, as you can see, we have equivalent, which isn't great, we had equivalents. We have good word, which is me talking about it. These are our words from earlier on. We should have tranquility down here somewhere. Uh, and you can search through, if I click at 227, this is entirely uh, what I've been saying. The oh. first person to ever get this right. <laughs> and it is a full transcript of basically the first 20 minutes of our talk, uh, which is now available. And we should be able to go, uh, let's see, we have Taylor Swift. And we have me, which is unexpected. Um, so that's my mention of Taylor Swift, and it will show up here. Uh, so if you have a look at this lengthy academic research into Taylor Swift, which goes on, which is quite staggering, um, you have a full searchable transcript which has been made. You can edit it if there were mistakes. So I think it got equivalent wrong. So if we go back in, get it, got it. Uh, oh, it's only gonna look for Taylor Swift now is annoying. Uh, oh, I have to get rid of Taylor. So this is Taylor. How do you spell? Uh, so we can edit this by going, okay, got it. Uh, we can highlight, copy the text. Where's my edit button? Edit. <laughs> There, so that shouldn't be equivalent, it should be equivalence. So you can fix the transcript if there are errors. And done, and now that is updated. Um, so it gives you a full editable transcript, this will work in multiple languages, not every single one. Yes? What was the audio on your phone? Uh, recorder. And then I upload, so I uploaded it to Drive, then imported it, so while the video was on, um, I was working. <laughs> and then I uploaded it from recorded to Drive, and then imported from Drive to Pinpoint, created a collection, and ran Pinpoint in the back end to uh, process it. It takes about roughly two to three minutes to do 20 minutes of audio. Um, it's good. Um, it's a very cool tool. Can I ask, in your experience, what was the worst thing about doing interviews? Transcribing. I hated the sound of my own voice. Uh, it was ridiculous. So that is the kind of things you can do with Pinpoint. It's a very quick version. Uh, if we have a look, these are some of the... Um, when you go into Pinpoint, there are collections. So these are collections that have been uploaded by other media organizations around the world. Um, and they're good basically for showing how the tool works. And there might be something you're interested in. Let me see if I can find... The Nacion, that's in Argentinian, which is Spanish. Let's go. Uh, 
uh, this is the, the Jan 6th committee, um, all the AP docs that were uploaded from that. So if you can see, we have all mentions of Donald Trump. We could go Donald Trump with Washington, and it'll narrow them down. So we're now from, uh, from 329 documents, we're down to 100 and maybe final report. And now we're down to three mentions of Donald Trump in Washington in the final report. Um, so it's a really good way for narrowing things down and investigating documents. This has been used by some um, rather high-profile people. Um, so that's how it works. Uh, you can share the documents, so you can share your workspace. You can then also remove people from your workspace if you no longer want to collaborate with them, um, which is useful. Uh, and you can all work together through document collections. Um, Maria Rasta used this. Um, she uploaded all of her own, um, I said, this is genius, all of her own notes um, from previous investigations so that she was very quickly able to go back through them and be like, oh, what was said in the past about X and Y? And then she would be able to get it really quickly and then she could upload it. Uh, it, it has been used, it has run, won a Pulitzer um, for a investigation into um, people in the US using different state laws after they've been struck off for driving um, and getting their driver's license back and then subsequently killing people on the roads. Um, and basically there was no oversight between the, the, the different granting bodies, but you could download all the documents and search through for the different people, which was what the Boston Globe did and they were able to highlight the mistakes in the system. Um, and that was like millions and millions of documents. Um, that was Pinpoint Live. So Pinpoint's cool. Um, it's got cooler as well. We have a new part of Pinpoint, which is called Structured Data Extraction. Um, very good name, Structured Data Extraction. Uh, hands up who's interested in data journalism. Excellent, excellent. Hands up who's heard of Structured Data Extraction. Winner. Um, very good. Um, so Structured Data Extraction is our, is our new tool. Um, it is still in beta. You will have to apply in order to get access. I'll give you a sneak peek because you seem like a nice group. Um, basically, if you have files that are of a similar type, so the top one is quite good, it will allow you to extract the data from relatively the same place across all of those files in one go. The invoice at the bottom, as you can see, the data is in different places and it's a different structure, so it's quite difficult to extract that. So the best way to see this is actually for me to show it to you. So this is pinpoint again. Um, I'm just going to use this as a, some, some files that we made ourselves um, to work with it. And down here in the bottom left, it says extract structured data beta. So I'm going to click on that, and it will do a little bit of processing. And these are our country reports. So as you can see, I'm just going to remove this because I was playing with that earlier. Um, this one says China. At the top, we have some tables. Um, this button here allows you to extract a table. I'll just show you this, this collection so that you understand. This is a collection of different PDFs for each country with uh, basically the similar data in similar places. So if I go in here and I click table, I can highlight this table here, cross, I'll give it a name, I will call this one area, and I'll click save table. And it worked. Um, so at the bottom, in this loading panel, it's going to show me what it is taking out of the other documents. So there's Afghanistan, it's taking the same data. There's China, that's this one. Egypt, and it's taking the same data out, and it's creating a table across all of these. So that's for tables, which is quite nice, and that's quite simple. Once I click Extract, this will extract it all to a CSV, which you can download and play with, do whatever you want with, um, which is quite handy. This will also work at scale, like proper scale. This is done on about 12 files. This will work up to thousands. Um, if that's good, where this gets really cool, ah, I'll remove that panel, I'm just going to kill off this one, is this um, key value. So I can decide, right, I only want total, and I only want total with this. I'm doing this one-handed, which is not really the way to do it. I'll kill that again, sorry. Uh, so I want total, and I want this figure. I'm not really interested in land, so we'll ignore land. I'll take water, and I'll take this bit here. Uh, let's take this kind of relatively unstructured bit. We'll take religion, and we'll take 
all of the percentages of that. And as we can see, it's still extracting the files. It has now pulled out just those sections for me. Um, it's incredibly smart. You can indeed export them to CSV. You can do whatever you want. If you click this extract button, so at the moment it's this is just like a the, the, the panel at the bottom is just a preview. Um, so once you click extract, it'll extract some progress and create a CSV that you can then download. Um, if you want access to this, come talk to me. Um, I will add you to a list. Uh, it was developed by a really cool guy called Shlomo. Um, he lives in Tel Aviv. He makes cool tools. Um, it's really, really good. It's very smart. If the table is split over two pages, it's smart enough to understand the table is split over two pages and it will continue to pull it from the second page. It's ridiculously good. Um, I'm, we're really excited to see what people can do with this. So please do come and talk to me. We would love to get this into your hands. And that's pretty much everything I was going to talk about. Uh, wherever my presentation disappeared to. Um, no, not that one. Did I close it? Oh no, it's on this tab here. Um, so if you want access to Pinpoint, go to journaliststudio.google.com forward slash Pinpoint. You still have to sign up. Um, there is a separate sign up for a structured data extraction. Come talk to me, I'll get you that. Um, and if you want more training, we do quite a lot of training. We have a team of roughly 14 teaching fellows who are a bit like me, I was one, who go around the world and they train in multiple languages. They will go into your newsroom and teach you how to use our tools. This costs nothing. Um, we are delighted to do it, yes? Uh, what, yeah, pretty much. We try to do every country. That's, we're nearly there. <laughs> we generally will find a way to get to wherever you are. Um, we prefer to do it in person because I like meeting people and I think you can train people better in person, but when we can't, we do it virtually. Um, do get in touch. G.co forward slash news training, that's our online site. Uh, and thank you. Um, I'll throw it open for questions. Uh, you, ha you were first, actually. She was just first. Uh, oh, sorry, me? microphones. Yeah. Okay, so I need to hold the microphone if it's not a problem, so I'm going to pass through everybody who has a question. Thank you. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Does the pinpoint transcription transcribe more than one language in the same workspace? Yes. <laughs> It will transcribe, it, it should transcribe whatever language the file is in. So, it, but do we have 100% global language coverage? No. Are we working on it? Yes. The question was if there's multiple languages, though, do you have to transcribe some English and German? In a given transcription? Yeah. No. So it will, um, actually, we've never tried. I don't, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I don't know. Um, it, it, if, if the file is in German, it will transcribe to German. But if the file is in English and German, I guess it would work. I've just never done it. It's a good question. Yes? Uh, I have a question concerning the uh, Google search operators. I recognize that you used uh, the plus as a uh, search operator. And uh, I thought everything you put into the search mask is automatically connected. And all the words should be in the document you are looking for. Uh, they should, plus just kind of forces it. Um, it it's, a go it's good practice to do it. Is it completely required? No, and it, it should mean that you should get that one. The thing about search operators is they get updated quite often, um, and some of them will intermittently stop working, but they tend to come back. Plus is currently working. It was ampersand for a while, but that's gone. Hi, thank you. So just. Oh, I'm sorry. So just to make sure, like, no matter what type of file I upload on Pinpoint, what's going to happen is that Google owns that file and no, will no, access no. it at any no. time, though? Because it's, like, if I'm working on, like, an investigation, like, say, Mafia or, you know, something highly sensitive, 
Then I have this like trove of documents and files uploaded on Pinpoint, and I, you know, I'm kind of concerned about who can view this content and you know what kind of privacy those documents have. So the, 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 they have the highest level of privacy of um, any of Google's tools. To give you an example of how level, high this level of privacy is, um, I cannot access Pinpoint using my corporate account. I have to use my private Gmail account because Pinpoint requires a sequestered part of drive space and it's against our corporate policy to have sequestered drive space to yourself. So it is entirely private to you. Now, there is a full answer to all the privacy questions on the FAQ, which goes into more detail than I will here, but you can look at it there. You own those files, you can delete and remove those files, and it will comply with Google's normal removal um, standards, which are complete. I think just clarifying, uh, it seems like the concern is that because we got to see other people's investigations and files, what did they choose to share those? So yeah, they had, they okay. had to go, actually, you can't even do that. <laughs> so that's a partnership um, activation that you have to go through with a publisher. Uh, you cannot actively publish, at the moment on Pinpoint, you cannot actively publish your own investigation. The shared document collections are done with large-scale publishers, like La Nacion is the biggest publisher in Argentina, um, Abragi, who are the biggest publisher in Brazil, they have files there, the AP files, they're from the AP, the Washington Post have files there. They're all household name publishers, and that's been done through a partnership activation with those publishers, where they've agreed to share these files with the community. Anything else? I don't think so. Wonderful. Oh, well, thank you for coming, particularly very early on a Saturday morning. You're probably hungover. <laughs> <laughs>